everybody. Thank you. Okay. I move that we accept the minutes from the previous meeting. Good idea. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Andre Soros. <coughs> Jeff Tolman from Cytec Engineering, uh, here rep representing Andre Soares for the, uh, the ANRAD that's currently before you. Um, I do have uh, a few copies of revised plans um, that we had been working on that have not been submitted to you. Um, I have submitted them to your consultant um, for review. Off of uh, Milk Street, um, it's on the, uh, the east side of Milk Street, you know, so we know where we, are. we know the property well. So, uh, basically, since we initially filed the, the plan, we did receive some uh, comments from uh, Nova Armstrong. Um, took my wetlands consultant a little bit to get back out there, and it's probably best that he waited because it would have been tough to do in the, uh, you know, in the, in the summer months. But he was back out there and. Um, I want to say it was the beginning of October, maybe late September, to review Marty's comments. Um, for the most part, with the initial flags that they had on the plan, I believe Nova Armstrong um, agreed with the location-wise. The issue um, we had was there were some additional um, resource areas um, that were not shown on the plan, uh, specifically rental pools under the local bylaw um, in, a, in a few other couple of areas. Um, that uh, Nova Armstrong wanted us to look at. So uh, the consultant took the comments, went back out there uh, in the field and did, you know, find some other additional areas that were flagged and then field located. The um, okay. And then there was some, cl the classification of some of the resource areas that we had shown on the initial plan has changed. Um, there is a pond located in the middle of the property in this location, which we just had shown as a bordering vegetative wetland previously. Uh, but it is in fact a pond with a the fine bank around it. Uh, there's an intermittent stream that goes, runs, um, actually starts here, goes into the pond, and then exits the pond here and flows in this direction. Um, and there were three, I'm sorry, four uh, vernal pools that were identified uh, that meet the criteria under the local bylaw, and they are located in this location here, 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 and over in the D series wetland over there. Uh, there's also a, an intermittent stream that comes onto the property in this location through a culvert on the Milk Street and flows in the uh, northeast direction. And there's also a set of catch basins here that discharges into that stream. Uh, you know, other than that, I don't want to get too technical with you. Uh, again, the plan's been revised, submitted back to your consultant. We've gone back and forth a couple of times just on a couple of minor details at the end. Um, but I believe uh, the plan in its current form is basically found acceptable by your consultant. And I'll let Marty speak for herself on that. Have you seen this plan, Marty? Yes, I have. Um, um, Jeff and I have been working um, since Monday, go back, going back and forth, getting the plan to the point where, you know, it could be the final, the final plan of record. Um, they actually added a couple notes to the plan with um, um, plan uh, references, you know, where they got the property boundary, where they, you know, the, the existing conditions, topo. Um, so that was added to the plan. They actually added a, um, 
a PLS stamp um, to the plan in um, place of the, the, the professional engineer stamp. Since this is an ANRAD, they're certifying the location of the, of the flags in relation to the property boundary. So they did that. Um, the um, one thing that um, we had pointed out in our original letter, I think it got lost in translation, was there's just there's just two flags in the field that we found. Um, they're between um, yeah, it was between um, C35 and C38. We actually found C36 and 37 in the field, and they were accurate in the field. And the, the survey crews probably just didn't see them, and they didn't pick them up, so they don't show on the plan. Um, we recommend in our final letter that um, the commission can confirm the C series um, BBW with the exception of the, the boundary between C35 and C38. Um, or if you prefer, they, I, I, um, Jeff had mentioned that they possibly could get the plan, those two flags added to the plan um, for the final plan. Um, it can be done either way. The um, one other point I made was the, the, they did add the four vernal pools to the plan. We did. You know, I looked at um, all four, and you know I feel pretty strongly that they are vernal pools, just based on physical characteristics. I did look at. Um, this was a little bit difficult to find in the field. And, you know, it would have been really tough when it was really dense um, vegetation out there, but. I did look at it, and I don't feel that's a vernal pool. I don't think it's deep enough and holds enough water. Um, it would hold enough water, but it's you know it's a drought condition right now, and um, it's not a vernal pool breeding season. So, you know, I, I just make a comment that in the future, if there's anything proposed on this property, that um, someone take a look at it again. Um, you do have a hundred foot buffer jurisdictional around that IBW under the bylaw, so, um, you know, you do have some protection of that depression if it turns out to be something a little bit more than I think it is, which I don't. Um, the pond, you know, they did identify the um, different resource areas. They all have different performance standards, so if something gets proposed on <coughs> the property, the commission can address the performance standards for whatever resource it is. If, if any impacts are proposed, um, you know we we identified that pond out there. Um, I mean, we are not that familiar with the property, but it's dry as a bone right now. <laughs> I mean, I walked straight through it. It was great crazy. Um, but the USGS shows it as a uh, surface water body, and it's big enough to be defined as a pond. So that's why we you know we thought it should be identified as a pond, and then with the bank boundary versus BBW. And, um, but I, I think, that, but that's it. I mean, other than that, um, you know, they've done everything that we've suggested and we've worked with them to get the plan to a point where, um, you know, the commission can confirm the boundary locations. We did look at a couple areas that are shown on the, noted on the plan as not having, um, greater than 50% wetland vegetation. There are this area and this area. I, I looked at them. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Um, and, and neither did um, the wet, their wetland consultant. Yeah, there was there was this area here up yeah. along the side of this isolated area and then down in this little pocket here. Yeah, yeah I, I just didn't, I didn't feel there's any additional wetland there. Um, so, but. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have any questions. Maybe the audience does. So well, uh, how about John? The only problem I have is uh, the 53G account that we set up for our consultant has not been replenished. We've notified the applicant of that. Um, it was my understanding that it would get done prior to tonight's meeting. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. So. If you wanted to, you know, close the hearing, if everything else is acceptable, what I would recommend is just hold on to the ORAD and the issuance until you get... Well, we have 21 days to issue. Uh, we could close the hearing uh, uh, and uh, just take 
as much time as it needs to, uh, sure. once the account is replenished, we'll, we'll start on the uh, ORAD. Yeah. Okay. You want to make a motion? No, the uh, audience might have questions. My nope. question would be access to that. And because I see there's a vernal pool. Off Mill Street? The, yes. yes. So how would they gain access or what would be the, you know, can they I'm go through certain. there? What, what is the 40 foot? What, what does the planning board require? For well, we're strictly here for the delineation of the resource areas. We're not proposing any activities out here now. Any future development on this property, there is, there's plenty of room for access. You're looking at an 80 scale plan. Um, so there's plenty of room for access in this way into the property and there's an additional access here. Um, so, but that's just speculation at this point. We're just looking to get so the resource areas. So actually they have two access areas. Oh yes, yeah, so okay. there's more than one. There's, there's ways to get in there. That you're gonna have to ask the planning board. We're okay. dealing with all those little slash marks that you see around all the dental pools. Mm -hmm. That's what this hearing is all about. Okay. So, but as a uh, conservation commission, is there, um, like I have no idea how far, far you need to be away from that vernal pool to have access. Is the that a question? The buffer zone shows right on it. That's the 100 foot buffer. Up. The shaded areas. So in other words, um, in this location, the buffer zone extends right to the property. Yeah. So any type of activity that involves coming in this way would require a filing with the conservation commission. And you would get notice of that. Because there's so we, a stream that's right there where you point. Well, because of right. right, because of this wetland here right. and the vernal pool and the and the, uh, mm -hmm. the the town defined vernal pool, which extends it here, and then you add the buffer zone on it, it goes right to the property line. So any type of activity proposed in here, we'd be back here, and likely uh, before the planning board. So you'd get notified for two hearings. So this, this meeting is just approving that everybody agrees on what that property looks just like? Just strictly for the resource area delineation. And then you would need to come back and meet in front of them again if you're going to... If we're, pro yeah, we propose an activity. Mm -hmm. And any lot that is within a buffer zone, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we require pilot. Okay. I just want to make sure... Actually, they would have to file with us for the subdivision. For the road, yeah, the roadway, yeah. certainly, if the roadway or drainage system or anything like that's in the, and, and, and in the buffer lots zone. Lots of design within the uh, buffer zone area, they have to develop, try to develop a lot with access roads, uh, try to delineate houses where they, uh, where they can fit them in. Uh, but those are all planning board issues, and they'll be, when they present the plan to the planning board, you'll all be notified again, and you'll be meeting in a different room. Only a difference. We're well, dealing people. with a lot of different uh, <laughs> material. What okay. they've tried to do here is delineate the wetlands, get approval for the de delineation, so they can design whatever they can subdivision. They can. And we had our consultant go out and look at the flags to make sure they were in the proper place. Here we go. Here we go. Here Step we go. one. Step five. Remember the pictures I gave you there, Jeff, on the last meeting. Hmm? The pond that collects behind my house here. Now, is that considered the 1841? Uh, 1841 Milk Street there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember the pictures I, I gave you there? Yes. They collect just after my property, the huge hole there. There's actually not much room. I mean, it looks like a lot because that picture is big. There's not much room between my property and that pond. There's less than 200 feet. Right. But. I mean, we're showing here's the pond, here's a 100 foot buffer, so. Yeah, right, and then, and then where the 100 foot buffer is, is, is where the hole is at. All the runoff from Milk Street runs between my yard and 1835 straight down. There's a lot of water that runs down that, you know what I mean, into that pond behind my house. There is a pond there. We're showing the pond. No, okay. I'm saying, those. if you look at those pictures I gave you, look again. I'll even walk down there with you. Charlie's been in my house before. They have There's a heck of a dip there. Is that dip on the plants? Yeah. But there's a difference between temporary holding of water and an actual pond. That's a pond. When water puddles up, uh, eventually it pitches into the ground and goes. That's stuff they're going to have to deal with when they design a subdivision. It's runoff water, actually, and it doesn't, it really isn't a wetland issue. <coughs> 
a pond to a permanent body of water, okay. not a temporary body of water after a rainstorm. That's the distinction I'm trying to make. I mean, indentations or water. You put fill a cup, hold water. You pour but, water but on you the know top, they, they, they fill water. that in. Guess what happens to my yard? Well, you're, you're talking I don't about have a backyard anymore. You mentioned but, 200 but, feet away, correct, from your property? Right. Okay. There's 100 feet from the pond. Another 100 feet puts you right on the back edge of the property. There's the pond you're talking about. That's no, shown on the right. Pond. So that water, okay, collects right over here, mm, right here. So my, it runs right between the cabarals and my, right down here. There's a huge hole right there. If you guys, want to check it out? You're welcome to. Oh, I thought if you can see the graduation down the back. <coughs> That he gave you, they're, they're right there. The elevation. Yeah, lines 50 on feet. Yeah. 53. This is a little yeah, slight yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really sunk in. According to this. Yeah, so. Just like it shows on the map. So I just want to make sure this does not get filled in. Because guess what happens in my backyard? Okay, well, again, again that's, we're talking that, about proposed activities, not resource areas that we're showing here. Okay, that, that would be something that if they do propose something in the future okay. with the planning board, All right. because that is not a wetland. We are not dealing with that issue today. Now, we understand what you're saying. I can see it on the map where the elevation is 53 feet and around it goes up to 56, so you have a two-foot depression. Mm -hmm. I can see that here, mm -hmm. okay? That, that, that's visible uh, to us. So that uh, uh, if they were to come and do some work, uh, uh, make a proposal, yeah. then this would, I don't know if they would put a roadway there. I have no idea. Maybe they'll do nothing with this property. Maybe they'll say, gee, there's too much, too much wetland. Uh, we're just gonna give it up. I, I don't know. Okay. You know, that's up to the engineer and the owner. Uh, but if they do, it's going to have to go to the planning board, and that would be the issue to show them there, that they can't have it because of that reason. Okay. The planning board has a consultant oh, on. Right. Yeah, you can understand why, because my yeah, right. grandchildren and everything, that. I mean. Okay, I mean, but they, we're saying, right. as, uh, and I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But as far as an issue for wetland delineation, because okay. it's because it's only a uh, it is a depression, but it doesn't contain holding water f to make it a, a pond or a vernal pool, or um, then we're okay. not going to classify it. Okay. But that's something for them to take note of if future development right. should take place. It's like you, it's like that pond now that you mentioned that's dried up in the back there, the big pond. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in the drought. Same thing with that behind my house and it's in the, you know, when you get the thaw. Well, I know, it's, it's, dry. it's dry. It's Boy, dry. you should see that because you have the pictures of the winter. I showed you all the runoff going down. But it's depicted on the plan. Okay. No, no, no. This is, this is another one. This is, this is right yeah, here. But, yeah, I know that. But the pond is depicted. This is what we're dealing with. Right. Okay. Right. These but are upland to... areas that hold water after rainstorm. But that's what I'm saying. They don't qualify as a mineral pool. It's an upland vegetation, and there's not much we can do. If it's uplands, it's uplands. If it holds water for a couple of months a year and it has little froggies and all the other necessities of a mineral yeah, pool. You've been there. It. You've you've seen the. I mean, but, this is not. But like, these are mineral pools. <laughs> this is not like a mineral pool. pool. It's a uh, good sign. I've never seen it when it's uh, full. No, no you haven't seen it when it's full, but it hit trust me. When I saw it, it, it looked pretty dry to me. Well, it was dry. Right. Well, so was always that part. But that's the agri <laughs> way I mean. Tonight, it doesn't really, there's nothing we can do about it. Right. right. We've had two experts walk this property pretty thoroughly and looked at all these areas with all these depressions because it is kind of a complicated property being an old gravel removal area, gravel pit. Uh, there's a lot of depressions and stuff like that throughout the whole property. And, and I know I can so develop, If it gets developed, the rules will go through. They won't have depressions. They'll be flat. It'll go from mountains. I, I'm talking about what's on the what's on the ground right now, not <laughs> anything in the future. And these areas have been looked at, yeah. and they don't classify as a resource. Area. Well, I looked at it with him. It was dry as it dry could be, but it, yeah. it has the capacity to hold water. No doubt about that. It's lower than the rest of the uh, uh, surrounding areas. There's a lot of yeah, a lot of little pockets, but they're going to have the right vegetation. And exactly. Um, 
the route of fact. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, okay. I do. All right. But you understand me, I understand you. Yes. <laughs> you cross, you'll have to I'll take the battle to another commission <laughs> another day. Okay, we will do. Okay. There's no other uh, questions. I'll make a our consultant is satisfied with the wetland delineations. She made notes of several that uh, she would uh, uh, not consider. Mentioned the isolated wetland that might be someday a mineral pool, but isn't right now. It doesn't have the qualifications. It's dry as can be. Uh, everything's dry. Everything's, everything's dry. dry. Everything yeah. is. There's not We're much still in really drought. Yeah. We're still yeah, in, the in, the and the middle. drought's getting worse again because um, today's rain was not not even enough to spit in the well, ground. At least the Sibiriansed River is moving now. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion then. If, if there's no, if you don't mind, um, if you. If, if you want to make a motion, I'd like it to include the, um, the symbol of a revised, revised plan showing those two flag locations in a, in a review by Monty just to okay him before you issue the ORAD so we'll have one final plan that has everything on it. That was, just uh, that, that was numbers. 33 to 35? Yeah, the flag, yeah between 35 and 38. 30, 36, 36 and 37. 36 and 37. Right. They're in the field. They just weren't picked up by field survey. We can pick okay. them up, add them to the plan, you know, let Monty take a look at it and... Yeah, uh, we'll sign off on a location. Know about where they should be. And now, then that way, when you issue the ORAD, you can reference that new plan, and they'll have everything on it. Very good. That's what, that, that's our intention. Fine with me. Okay. Uh, I move that we accept the delineation, the revised delineation, including. I'll. Map numbers 36 and 37, pending the replenishment of the 53G account. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. So we'll be notified any if they do anything. If, yeah, if they do anything, you will be. Okay. He's just going to get official approval to say we we agree with this. Okay. Well, this with the land as it or more to as it is right now, but with a different organization and maybe back with us again. If they do get a, a approval from the planning board or subdivision. We'll certainly be involved. So oh, we're definitely we we'll definitely be involved because they're going to go through buffer zone. So, and that's what you would have to approve? Uh, how it would go through, where it would go through, and uh, uh, how they're going to protect the ex 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 exterior of the uh, buffer zone. So if they were to go through here, uh, because it, that's buffer zone, they cannot go in anything here. They cannot do, they cannot touch in here. Mm -hmm. this, this is this, this inner limit here. But if they were to go through here, we would condition what it's going to look like and, uh, and what's going to happen. Any of these buffer zones around the delineated wetlands, including the, the uh, other bill holes, they'd have to file. And they can use buffer zones for house construction, road construction, with limits. Uh, the Wetland Act allows them to use the whole 100 feet. Uh, our bylaw doesn't allow any construction within 50 feet of the wetland and a 25-foot understeer zone adjacent to the wetland. So there's 50 feet the less that they can use for actual construction. And no septic systems within 100 feet of the wetlands. So that, so that, so if there's, I assume you do not have sewer there. So, so no septic systems could be within any of these lines here. This is probably not the right commission, but would you know, so if they put the road in and they have to be careful from that? They have, they have dimensions and placement of road. The planning board has regulations for all of that. How close you can build to uh, a, Someone's a butters, the whole works. Oh, okay. But that's a whole different process. So I'm sure that you 
be in attendance, and I'm sure that you will ask a lot of pertinent questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just picking a few brains right there. Well, thank, thank, you. thank you for the information. Yeah, well, thank, you. Really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're old enough to be public servants. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen with uh, public officials nowadays, the ruling class and the working class, the magistrates and the peons. <laughs> so that's it. We've closed the hearing. You can go home and watch television. Yeah. <laughs> you can put on Fox News and see what's going to go on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and try not to get too worried about the coming construction. You'll have a long time to relax and wait for it. That's fine. I worry about children's Thanks, safety. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Sandra Watkins. Um. <coughs> Where am I? Do you guys have um, uh. engineer plans? Pick up, Sandra. Did you get engineer plans? Yeah. I actually joined a new baby to be there. Where is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, pass them down. That's this right oh. here. Okay. I have additional copies of data. No, we just need two. Huh? Okay, wait, let me get this out of here. So, so, that we don't get, I, so I can see that map. And, uh, all right, what are we doing here, Sandra? Um, I'd like to. Um, oh, yeah. Could you hold up for a moment, uh, since since I'd like to take a look at the map as as it's going on. Do you have another map here? Or? I do. You, use that one. No, 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 no. That was that was the uh, map from from uh, Tom. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Right here. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay, I'm sorry. Funny. <laughs> all, right. all right. That's what happens when things go too fast. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. All right. This is the wetland line. It's a two hundred foot. There's a there's a stream over here. Sunken Brook goes right through the dump that has a riverfront area. This is the wait, riverfront. So this is, a, wait, what side is this on? This, this is a tree much. Yeah, no, okay. Right across from middle. Okay, all right, okay, okay, okay. Right all right. I'm, I'm, I'm down on, I'm down yeah. south yeah. side yeah. of the, uh, two on the wrong side, okay. Um, so no, the no, land, no, the no, landfill no, is right no, here. No, it's down it's here. across the street. This, is west of you, it's on the north side no, of Tremont okay. Street. Okay, okay. Okay. And Middle Street comes right into Tremont. Okay. Right all right. Okay. And this is Forest Street down here. Okay. All right. Okay. So all right. So as I'd be looking at it, uh, if I was standing in the street, I'd be going down. This if would you be were standing in Tremont. This would be this would be Forest Street here. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm all set now. Okay. Okay. Sunken Brook. Uh, George I you design the uh, septic is about the, the two hundred foot riverfront. This is a wetland. Okay. Now this is uh, just I'm sorry, this is a hundred foot buffer. It says two hundred foot buffer. Yeah, well two hundred the stream runs right down here through the uh, Oh okay, the all right, part. okay. And this this is a hundred foot of the wetland. Goes okay. So now right here. Is this where the trailer was? Correct, exactly. Where the George trailer Sullivan. was? Nope, it's no, actually to... The next lot. The next yeah, lot, okay, next all right, lot. okay, all right. Okay, so uh, this way, this is a uh, determination, okay. It's an idea. Yeah. Okay, so what is this one here, 100 foot? So the buffer zone goes... Hundred foot buffers right here. Comes down with it's a no here's a buffer right, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm looking at this here. Okay. Has any so, work at all been done yet on the on this lot? Nothing. Um 
Okay, where's the, so we got a uh, 50 foot no construction zone. I don't see that line on here. 56 feet. Okay. And 25 foot is here. No touch. The, okay, this um, pink line on here. Uh -huh. Is that your 25 foot? Uh, that's the soap feet within. Top. Yeah. That's the soap plant. Yeah, but there's also but okay. I just want to see where 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 the um, um, 25 foot no touch zone is. If is that's where the silt siltation is. That's where he's putting the silt sock on. Correct. Okay. Okay. So the house will be within the buffer zone. Septic system is outside of the hundred. Correct. That's in the front of the property. And the yeah. reserve is in the front of the property. There's okay. no solar plants in here. Yeah. No, and once I get myself oriented to it, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. It's right over here. Right over here is Middle Street. What? Somewhere over, right over here is Middle. What? What are you looking it's, at? No, I'm just saying it's Middle Street here. So this house is, and this here is Forest. No, Forest yeah. is down here. Well, okay. Well, there's a wetland area. Yes. No, no, I know. I, ju I was just out of that, out of, uh, okay. Fifty-five point five, fifty-six point five to the back of the house. Okay. So uh, hundred foot back will go right through here. Do you have any plans to put permanent markers at the 25 foot no touch zone? Yes. Um, we need it. We need it flagged before we're done, so we can go look and see where your line is. Uh, if there's nothing that's been done, uh, you know, we need some. We need. We need to see see that uh, area marked. It has been marked. Oh, I asked you if there was any work done, and you said no. Oh, I'm sorry. It has been marked. Uh, I so thought you were talking about, up. like, there are yeah, flags up. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was also work that has been done here already. There's work that's been done there already because it butts my property. So there's sand and stuff that's already been dropped off there. Jim took a look at it today. So they are, you know, I started to do work there. And it's, um, it's, as we know, it's wetlands. It has been. I've been here for 20 years. Yeah, the wrong wetlands marked on the plan. It's a and it butts my property in the back on Forest Street. But it's very wet. I got a natural spring in the backyard on my property. The sunken brook. Yeah. It's a natural spring. I've been here for 20 years. So you you live on Forest Street? Yes, I do. Which is how far from this proposal? Um, it's got to be. You you got to be at least 500 feet. Maybe more. Yeah, it's more. Some could yeah, we're just, right yeah, just, just concerned about the wetlands. I know yeah. right now everything's dry. We know everything's dry right now. Yeah. But that whole corner from Tremont Street to where she's proposing is usually yeah. underwater two or three feet, and there's a, lot, a stream that runs through there. And yes, it shows on the plan. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. The but there is work that's being done there. She said there was no work being done, and there is work being done there already. Yeah. They have a delineated wetland. It was delineated so they could do the perk test. We checked the property to make sure that they could do a perk outside of the 100 foot buffer. Okay. Okay, so, so you have been there to the site? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the wetland is over here. It's all flagged. Okay. So, we're, we're, this, this house and septic are strictly upland. As a matter of fact, it extends right down to here. Yeah. That's the buffer zone. That's the wetland line. And the buffer zone is 100 feet from that. Okay. So it goes there and it sneaks around through here and comes around through there. Okay. No, exactly. I know it. The, the land, yeah. the land uh, heads up. It goes uh, uphill. Yeah, it's not much of a hill there. It's fairly level. But it. I'm saying event, eventually it, it, yeah, it, it runs goes downhill up. into the sunken brook. It goes brook. into the sunken brook. Yeah. And sunken brook is, an, is a perennial stream on the USGS map, so it's got a 200 foot. Riverfront buffer area. Okay. And even with that, uh, in the Riverfront Act, you can build within the uh, buffer of the. You have to. You have, yeah, you have to file notice of intent then. 
So they stood completely out of uh, any uh, resource area and fit the house into that area that shows on the uh, plan. Okay. Okay, I, uh, I know the area, so that, that's uh, once I get myself oriented to it. Um, I have no, I have no further questions. Jim, no. I make a motion that we uh, uh, close the hearing and issue a determination of uh, applicable. We have a question. Did you have a question, sir? Uh, I was just concerned about the wetlands. I got the okay. budget notice and it uh, says will you put you know, within 100 feet of wet zones. So that they put permanent markers uh, at the 25 foot no touch zone. Okay, okay. then it's before we uh, take a vote, we'll issue uh, child family concerns. Okay, you, you made the motion. Yeah. I'm going to amend the I'm going to amend the motion yeah, saying that that uh, permanent markers be installed at the 25 foot no uh, touch zone. So where the silt sock is going to be represented. Uh, this, this would be an area that uh, would just be permanent uh, a buffer to the uh, here here plant. and. The no, no touch zone is way down here. Yeah, the, 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 this is the so no the touch zone. Area. Here. Okay. At, mm -hmm. at, the, at uh, 25 feet from the wetlands. Okay. And it extends on the property, but uh, but you wouldn't need it over here because you're. I don't think you're going to be. You know, you're you're already 100 feet. I mean, that that's just the 25 foot no touch zone. So where would you okay. suggest they go behind the house? Yeah, behind <coughs> the house uh, at A11 to A15. Okay. One, two. Three. It'll be a condition on the RDA. Okay. Uh, so A11 through okay. A15. Yeah, he'll have. It'll be okay, written good. down. Thank you. That's uh. Or even A12, Charlie. A A11 is going to be. Uh, they're they're going to be way out. They're, they're going to be 75. A12 to A15. Yeah. So it's just that. It's just that back section. That there'll be permanent markers for the, so people don't so that the lawn more doesn't keep on going back further and further okay. and further and further okay. and, uh, and brush start getting thrown back there. Okay. okay. So I'll okay. make a motion there a that we issue a determination of applic applicability yeah. with three markers delineating the 25 foot on this vegetation zone of our by law. Second. From A11 to A15, evenly spaced. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll send you a determination uh, and then you can go your merry way. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have a question. Uh, are you related to Clint Watkinson? And, uh, I am. You am. Yeah. Father? He's my uh, father-in-law. Okay. I worked with Clint when he was a uh, tree warden. Clint is a very colorful father-in-law. He is. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Jeff Kirby. And Mary Francisco, I'm the engineer representing uh, Jeff Kirby. Be, oh, his regional world, so it's going to be uh, 
right here. High school is going to be right here. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, the tennis center, yeah. Okay, okay. Mistakes on the side. Okay, so, so you are so you are uh, just on the on the east side. Yeah, of the if you have the um the cottage is there to show you the session that there's three lots in. Yeah. So um, okay. the applicant actually owns this house as well and, and lives right there. Yeah, yeah. And then there's one more lot over here before you hit uh Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um so what we have here, the blue line is the uh flagged wetland. Uh the pink is the twenty five foot no touch. And then the yellow is the uh, siltation controls. Okay, I have a I have a question here sure. right to start off. I don't know if it was written wrong or whatever. It says uh, uh, you're going to take place within the hundred foot buffer zone. That's except, okay, our bylaw says no septic systems within the hundred foot buffer zone. Okay, I had inquired about that to see if we could still come and, and check and see if we have a variance. Uh, we did get Board of Health approval pending your okay. acceptance. We don't give variances. Uh, our bylaw says there are no septic systems within the 100-foot buffer zone, and uh, that kind of kills it. All right. Um, yeah, that kills anything they can do on the lot. I mean, we've got it <clears throat> in the only... You know, I mean, it's all ways in the, uh, Yeah, this is... There's still 33,000 square feet, but because of the orientation, there isn't really much else they could do there. So the, uh, we did put the house at, at 50, the closest is 50, it's actually 52, and the uh, septic system is 65. The Board of Health give you a variance for the uh, uh, well, uh, it's over 50, so there's no okay, yeah, the woodland. But they did, a, I did get the approval and I submitted this hard copy to you. I did as well. Well, well, uh, when I spoke to you on the phone, they yeah. told me to try and, if they were okay with it, then we could still come. I don't have a copy of the bylaw with me. But um, we have it in the, in the back room. Uh, I, I'm looking for one right now. But I know we got it in the in, You got the key for the back room? Yeah. Well, we don't. We don't need to go dig one out. I mean, we, we know. Uh, it's no, no septic system. No right septic right. systems mm -hmm. within 100 feet of a, a, of the wetlands. Right. State law also. Um, no, actually, yeah, it's 50 no. feet, the DEP. Is it 50? You can get a variance, but you have to go to the DEP in addition to the Board of Health. State regulations are 50 feet. 50 feet. 50 feet. No, and then of course, our, our bylaw is more stringent. Yeah, our bylaw is more stringent. Mm -hmm. no, I, I don't have a copy. I don't know why. I get them at home then. Um, if you want to see it, but I know it's I know it's under. I know it's, it's hundred feet. Um, I mean the lot was created in two thousand two. Does that supersede the bylaw? No. Is it four? No. I'm not sure when that part was added in. It's when you're at, when you're applying anyway. It's not. It's not when it was added. It's yeah. Well, like you said, it was in. It was in the application that we sent in. So this one. Yeah, I think so. No room to move that either. Huh? No, I've got it. <laughs> I was hoping there were no other <laughs> questions. Be like, it's the only place I've got it as far away from you possibly get it. You know, and, uh, we put it. You get the will to deal with too. Right, with the well uh, system in the front. Um, Neither of those, Charlie. <laughs> uh, why do we need to get him a copy? I just want to check the uh, bylaw. Well, are you positive it's uh, 100 feet? Absolutely. Yeah, I am too. Oh. I am 100% positive. Yeah. <coughs> well, we'll have to deal with uh, what we have. Um, based based upon that, we we give a we uh, I move that we deny the application based upon the bylaw. 
There's no way at all that you can. Uh, no, this is the underfoot buffer zone right here. And as you see, well, so you get a buffer zone coming from both sides. Uh, no, it just flares off. This oh, way okay, I see. Yeah. I see what you got. See, so this would be the only area, and there's really no room to put. Uh, we put it as close as we could to that. <coughs> Rolled up. It wouldn't fit further over here? No, it's, that's, that's it's buffer zone. Buffer zone. You get the, the wetland line is over here. Yeah, this is a hundred foot buffer it goes right, right through here. Right. It peaks right there. Right. If it were over a little further. No, 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 no. That's in the wetland. It would have to come out here. And that's not their property. In other words, they own all wetlands. This is the this this little right here is the only place that's um, that's non wet. Or not wetland, according to their mapping. Wow. <clears throat> Have a question, Charlie? <laughs> it is what it is. Not any, there's not any relief for that. No, we we no. we 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 don't because we open up. Uh, you know, yeah. we have our guidelines, and if we do that, everyone's going to yeah. say, "Well, then I want it ten feet. I want it five feet. I want it in the wetlands," and and it just and, and it does not uh, work. Yeah, I mean, we have the by newly created lines. I thought the water had the same. No, no, it's fifty. No. It's fifty. It, we still have to come here, you know, if we're, well, except, except for the bylaw, you know, yeah. um, we still have to file. Uh, not what I do with my... Okay, I, have a, I have a motion to uh, reject the application because of the, of the bylaw. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joseph Ferreira, Family Trust. Hawaii. <clears throat> you must be Joseph Ferrara. Yes, sir. Have a seat, Mr. Ferrara. You have somebody going to show us some plans? I do. So we have uh, Mr. Rob Davis, who's an engineer. What's his name? Rob Davis. Right. Is it Francisco? Oh, yeah. Uh, you have an option. Uh, you can appeal our uh, decision. Okay. Uh, okay. But it's Superior Court. Yeah, right. right. DEP or the Superior Court. Okay. No, okay. not DEP. No, okay, Superior Court. Okay. Thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Oh, that's my pen. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. I just get all like it. Thank you. <laughs> Get that information off your shirt, but you're moving around too quick. <laughs> Insight Engineering. Insight. Yep. 1539 Fall River Avenue, E.C. Cock. Okay. Okay, show us what you got. Very well. Uh, Rob Davis, Insight Engineering, representing Joe Ferrer from Catamaran C.C. Realty Trust. We have a notice of intent for you this evening on County Street in uh, Dayton, just south of house number 2632. The wetlands have been delineated by Brandon Fenna from Ecosystem Solutions. We've got two series of wetlands flagging, A series which runs along here, B series which runs along here. You may remember we were in here a few weeks ago requesting your permission before we did the park test. You allowed us to do the, the park test under request for determination of applicability. We did the park test. Got the perks located here. The buffer zone, the 100 foot buffer zone, is in here. And we were able to fit the septic system outside the 100 foot buffer zone. So we're good with that. The, it's a single family house that will be built in this area here. We have a driveway that will access the site from County Street. It will come up on our property in the upland area to the narrowest crossing point right here. It will cross through the wetlands 
and they require filling of 2,640 square feet, less than the 5,000 uh, square foot uh, trigger for uh, Army Corps of Engineers. The wetlands will be replicated in an area here with a 25% increase above what was being filled. Uh, we have a wetland replication plan that was shown on sheet two. Uh, uh, can, can we go? Let's go back to the first map. Uh, I'm not, we're not quite sure. done with that yet. <clears throat> this is the so County lot. Street to the house. How, how far is that? How long is that driveway? Well, that's 250, approximately 500 feet. It's a nine acre site, and this is the only upland area on the property. We need to access the upland area. Okay. Now, I have a question. Yes, sir. When you presented the application for the PIRC test, yes, sir. the wetland line that's here now was assumed. It was very close. It was approximate. Um, now, it's been flagged in, in the field? Yes, sir. Every wetland flag has been flagged, set right here, by the botanist. And we surveyed it and located it to scale on the plan. By Brandon Fanoff. That's correct. Well, now we're dealing with a house, not a PIP test. We should uh, verify that the flags are where they were supposed to be. That's a good idea, Mr. Mello. Uh, was this the, uh, the lot that you, we were, you were looking at to come from another direction as well? You, were, you had two options? That's no correct. Option. Yeah. That's correct. They came in from a different direction with swamp mats to make pick tests, but this is a lot, no? Yeah, no, I know, but they were, but they were, they were talking about coming in from they another did. direction. They, they came Street. from Elm Street then, because that was the least forested part okay. of the property. But, but they, but they couldn't. Okay, but you, they couldn't uh, come in and put an address on that side because of some of the situation. The situation was that this is heavily forested and wetland, okay. and up there uh, it was lighter and easier okay. to maneuver in with a piece of equipment. Okay. So we, we granted the uh, uh, RDA request to do the picks. Okay. But at that time, this was an assumed boundary. The upland, there's another upland area okay. above, that was delineated for the other three lots. Okay. But right now we're dealing with, with the wetland line that no, he laid out, but we should have it, uh, we should check it. We do with everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's listen to his proposal and then we, then we, we can have it uh, um, contact Marty and have him do a 53G and uh, from there. It looks like the septic and the house are outside of, uh, this is the 100 foot buffer? The green, the, that's the, the green purple. Green. You see everything okay? Yeah. This, is the the 100, 100, yeah. Yeah. this is 100 foot, right? Yeah, this yeah. is 100 foot. Right? Oh, okay. Septic system is in here. The orange oh, on that map. This is the 50 foot. Mm -hmm. The orange is 100 foot on that map? The orange is the straw wattle, okay. erosion protection. So there's two buffer zones I showed. The 100 foot buffer zone is here. Okay. Septic system is outside it. Oh wait, and then the other buffer okay. zone. This, this, this is, is the other one. Okay. Buffer zone wraps right around the uh, septic. Uh, that 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 I. Now we we, we need to. Uh, so the house is the house is going to be in buffer zone, and. Everything's here. At, According to them, is the buffer zone except for the septic system. I think I think that what we have what we have to do is have this uh, uh, officially delineated or or, or should uh, verified, and then have this map go to Marty and and let um, and uh, let her see where you say that was a nine septic. acre piece. Pardon me, sir. Nine acres. Nine acre piece. Yes, and the. Uh, and this is the that upper left corner is the delineation of the lot, the nine acre that, lot. Yeah, that's, that's a blow up lot. It's nine acres. In order to fit it, I had to do a reduction. Okay. Nine acres. 
Well, but what, 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 but you see what they're saying that this is the only place right here that's a hundred foot, which 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 is uh, well, that's uh, what Brandon said. But, well, yeah. well, we should, we're going to have to we, we should look at that. Oh, I mean, right. If it is what it is. If it is, if it is, it is. Yeah. No, I agree. Brandon's pretty good. We'll check it out. All the flags are where they're supposed to be. There's no disparity between our uh, consultant. Because I, I believe that we should uh, check the delineation. I know Brandon's a, a reliable guy, but okay, I, I just want, I want to measure something here for, for 50 feet. <laughs> With that crazy rule, really? Well, that's a there's 60. What do you want to measure, Joe? No, no. I just want. I just want to put a line. This so this ninety, and that makes one hundred feet. Okay. Right about where the line said it's supposed to be. Not here. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's sorry. wrong line. <laughs> but that's that's if these lines are accurate here. Well, that's the point of uh, double checking. That's if, so. If, if those lines are not accurate, then the problem is that. Um, I mean, he's got better rules than you have. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm putting Rob, it Rob, don't you have something you can assist us? <laughs> no. Uh, no, we're doing, we're doing all right. All the money we pay you, you're out of a ruler. We're doing all right, Rob. <laughs> no, I don't need anything else. No. That's, that's right on. Well, his line is right on to the 100, according to their, yeah. to their wetland flagging. Yep. There, 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 are, there are no errors on the map. It's either... Um, flags accurate. Uh, <laughs> you, you can want see. To remember that this is a public hearing, and you can't whisper. I know. Whispering. But I was just telling Jim his fly was open. That's yeah. all. I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got to hear the joke. <laughs> You can see that this is an extensive wetland <laughs> yep. in this front part right here. And this wetland line that Brandon set, you can see by the contours, it starts to flatten out. This is a flat area where the wetland is right here. So I feel very confident that that's going to be an accurate It, it would have been terrific if you guys had delineated it, uh, you know, not an assumed uh, delineation, a real delineation when you came in for the PIRC test. Yeah, I must have missed that meeting. We have to buy a regular ruler. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> I probably have one there, but no, that, that works. I mean, that works. works. That works. works. We can't afford a damn rule. <laughs> that works. Stainless steel. Uh, um, I'm willing to... Uh, we really do need to get a consultant to check Brandon's uh, what my mind. That's mm -hmm. So it would mean a continuance. It would mean setting up a 53G account. Uh, and uh, funding it, and the applicant funds the account. Uh, Whatever the commission decides, we'd like uh, to do. If you know, if if it is accurate, then it would. Well, he's, a, he's a good uh, uh, consultant. Knows what he's doing, but everybody makes mistakes. And before we uh, approve the uh, plan, I think that we should uh, double check the line. Because that's pretty critical. I mean, the septic system is packed right in that little, tiny little uh, eye zone. Uh, there's not much room for error there, is there? 
Well, you have room to move a house if you had to. But not the septic system. Uh, I make a motion that we continue the hearing. Notify our consultant that we have a line to check. Uh, set up a 53G account for the applicant, have it funded, and go from there. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, um, are you going to tell me about the 53G? Uh, or are you going to call with Marty first and show her the map and let her give you an yeah. idea? Well, we can do that. We have a map. Send it right we to We have it. several of them, actually. <clears throat> now, how do you get these maps for her? Okay. How do you get these maps to Marty? Uh, mail, mail. Or does she come here to the town hall? Oh, gotta pick them up. Something I need to sign for a continuance. We got. We're going to take care of you, Mr. Ferrara. Thank you. did on that uh, buffer zone uh, septic system? Just now? Uh, no, beforehand. Right. We rejected it because it's within 100 feet. Oh, okay. So if anyone well, come in, just, just... Okay. What street was that? Um, Oak. Oak. Oak Street. Okay. Is that what it was? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, Matthew. Hi, Mr. Digis. How are you? I am fine, thank you. And yourself? Doing well, thank you. You're still growing taller? Not much. I think no. I'm shrinking now. I'm starting no. to shrink a little. Jeez, I've been shrinking too. Have you? Yeah. They say that happens at a certain yeah. point, you know. My feet get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Must be part of it. We're here to discuss Matthew and Antonio's request for four. Compliance request. Certificate of compliance. Everything been done, Matt? Uh, on several of these, yes. There's one lot where there's still question as to what should be done in order to complete it. Um, the ones that we submitted plans and certifications from Prime Engineering on are 100% done and Prime certified to that effect. Those are lots three, four, and six, which are 15, 23, and 34 Maris Lane, respectively. You have three, right? Yes. Okay. Five being the one that's not done yet. Huh? Yeah, we haven't done. We haven't even submitted for for a notice of intent on lot five yet. Okay. Well, there are actually a total of. Uh, four remaining lots in the subdivision to be built on. I'm sorry, five. Four have been built on. Okay. Um, so what we have then is... Uh, we have, what, six? 
lot 5 and lot 4. I believe it's lot 6, lot 4, and lot 3. Oh, well, lot 3. Yep. Lot 3, lot 5, and 6 or lot 6. Unless there's a clerical error, it's lot 3, oh. or and 6, not lot 5. <coughs> Maybe there, there, might be a, there might be a clerical uh, error there, I'm not sure. Oh, seems like I don't have any time. problem with checking the uh, lots. Uh, we should check them before we issue a certificate of compliance. We have uh, the plan. I made copies of the orders of conditions for these uh, three lots. And we'll go from there. The conservation areas on these are pretty cut and dry. They're all in the back of the property, oh, I believe. Yes. And they're all well marked. There's signage on each of the lots. They're all well marked with signage at the at, at the line where signs? the signs signs yeah, yeah it was it was a requirement of the order that we put a sign up that says conservation restriction okay. area beyond this point yeah. so that once the silt fence is gone and we're done with construction homeowners know I that they're not we were doing concrete but uh, <coughs> this conservation restriction area next to uh, it looks like the south side of lot three. Is that the roadway going down to the uh, Would you mind if I take a look? The Would you mind if I take a look? Come on. Yes. Okay. This is a lot next to the uh, Nats. Yep. This and, is and this is lot six. Okay. And so this actually is um, and an access point between lot six and lot five that runs out to the retention pond okay. for stormwater okay. management. So there's a there's a pipe that's buried in here okay. and that connects to that whole yep. area. Got so it. that drains up the street? Yes. Yeah, all <coughs> the storm drains end up in that uh, okay. retention area. So you're looking for a certificate of compliance for three, five, and six? Three, four, and six, please. That's six, yeah. Three, four, and six. And the addresses are, if, if it matters, if you'd like, I can give you the addresses, too. Okay. Um, now, you received this. Have you been down there, Charlie? No, I'm, I will go down there. And uh -huh. I always got a house before they had no house. But, but we'll see what. Are the, are the lots marked itself? Oh, they're built. They have no, 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 but, okay, uh, lived in. Yes, yeah. all of them. Okay. I should give you the addresses because that's the only thing that identifies which house is which out there. The, you know, it doesn't say lot number, it says well, house seven, number. Go ahead. Seven, you only have three houses. That's true. It's the other three. Yeah. I mean, you know, hey, if yeah. any of these gentlemen want to go down there, I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. You know your way around the neighborhood okay. for sure. <clears throat> uh, did you know that uh, when and you built these? I don't know whether the contractor or the land, uh, the couple who did the grading, that they were uh, buffer zones to those uh, restricted areas. When we issued the order of conditions, it was a 25-foot understood vegetation zone between the uh, restriction and into the lot. And all of these, when they get uh, a certificate of compliance, it's only going to be a partial certificate of compliance. Several of these uh, conditions that we issued are in perpetuity. They stay with the title, title of a lot from owner to uh, owner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware of that, but... I'm aware that the, that the orders are in perpetuity and that they run from owner yeah, to owner. Yeah, they should be part of the, the uh, lot deed as well. Yep. <coughs> yeah, there's well, eventually, this is going to be a homeowners association? There is a homeowners association. Okay. Because the homeowners association, uh, we have, we issued uh, conditions that govern 
not the homeowners association itself, but the drainage area. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but there are certain things that should be done on a biannual basis under the uh, order of conditions, uh, like cleaning out sand catchers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the existing sand catchers should have silk socks around them mm -hmm. all the time, have yep. they? Yep. Okay. During construction. I mean, eventually, obviously. You're gonna, oh, yeah. Yeah. But during the construction, it mm -hmm. should be, uh, they were mowing restrictions, uh, had to be done periodically. Yep. Uh, <coughs> there was also supposed to be a report, and the commission's supposed to get a copy of it, but mm. I don't know whether you ever made a report or ever had an inspection. So, something to keep in mind. Okay. I mean, when we issue these things, you got to read them. I, I don't understand the... Well, go ahead. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. No, I mean, this is a public hearing. Speak up. A partial certificate of compliance doesn't make sense to me for these three If there are perpetual conditions issued, yep. they stay with the property because there's a reason for Agreed. it. Agreed. I understand that. The drainage is never right. going to change. But that's part of a recorded restriction that runs with the title to the property. No. The that's not part of the... restrictions that you recorded for NHESP are separate from our order conditions. You have conditions from NHESP, too. I've got a copy of those here as well. There were 15, I think, conditions that NHP issued, besides their boilerplate conditions. But we issued the conditions for, for the lots that 3, 6, and uh, whatever. Three, four, four. And they're all the same. I could have just taken one and they, they all, mm -hmm. they're great. Mm -hmm. But they all have the same restrictions. Uh, and when the lot was cleared, uh, and the, the boundary was set for the conservation restricted area you worked out with NHESP, there was supposed to be a 25-foot undisturbed zone from that point out. That, that wasn't observed. I noticed on the whole three lots. They were, it's going to be all lawn now because it was, it's all... If there were any trees or grass in that area, they're, they're history. Because it was graded right up to the uh, conservation restriction. But on the other lots that you do, uh, when you do the construction, we'll be making sure that there's uh, the boundary and the 25-foot understated zone beyond it. If there was no vegetation there, there's no vegetation. But if there's something there that uh, uh, is in that zone, it, it'll stay there. That's our order of conditions. So when we have it all staked out for construction, the engineers follow the recorded plan that outlines the conservation restriction areas. But the contractor who did the site plan, the site work, they, they're they supposed to have a copy of this. Sure. And they're supposed to abide by the conditions mm -hmm. that we issued in the order. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. Maybe what the hell? Mm -hmm. so. the, in other words, if the restriction... None of these houses have a 25-foot buffer between the conservation restriction area negotiated by NHESP and, and there's supposed to be one. There's going to be another 25 foot no touch zone. Yes. So in addition, so here is... Oh, he the, understands that. The, the, the another 25 feet beyond that. Where, where are you getting that from? By law. Uh, by law. That's a 25 foot. All of these orders are conditioned from a wetland? by issue. From a wetland. Well, these aren't wetlands. From the... It, the it, conservation by law. restriction uh, we've been area. Wait, wait, uh, okay. No, no, let no, me no, talk. No. We've been through this before. You and your consultant said that you didn't have to file notice of intent. Right. And under the Wetland Act, you don't. You filed mats as an RDA. Uh, all of these three were filed at, under our bylaw. These are issued strictly under the Dyke Wetland Protection Bylaw, not the state rest. Our bylaw considers the conservation restricted area a wetland, a protected area. Oh, we're going to end up arguing about that. You can argue all you want. It's a part of the bylaw, and when we issue an order conditions... It renders all the rest of the lots unbuildable. If you start no, putting a 25-foot buffer zone around it, there's not room for a house and a septic system. Look at how oh, big these backyards room. are. There's plenty of room for a house and a septic. Well, Excuse me, look at look at the plan. Huh? Look at look at the plan for lot 6. How far is it from the back of his house to the conservation restriction? 20. Feet. Oh, there you go. So we'll have woods 3 feet from that side well, of the it house. It could have been set for... 20, no, couldn't. couldn't. The septic system's as tight to the front, to the to the street as it could be. Uh, there's room for wiggling here. You, you, uh, 
forgive me, but I don't think you have the right to impose a 25 well, foot buffer zone around the conservation by law, restriction if you, area. If you want to prove your point, you have to take it to Superior Court. Well, I will do that if well, it comes to that. Okay, that's good. But you know, like you're coming up with this stuff that's We're not, not coming up with it's it. It's not it was consistent. In the damned when we issued the order before documents. you built There's the house, recorded documents. before the house was built, you had one of these. That's what you had. And it was supposed to be built according to the conditions. There's, no, there's nothing in that document that mentions a 25-foot buffer zone around the conservation restriction. Oh, is that area. right? Nothing in this? Okay. You're looking at a whole different thing. <clears throat> this is the conservation plan. That's approved and recorded. NHP. Yeah. Our plan says you've got to go 25 feet further out this way. All right. Well, then we'll end up going to court. Can't happen. It's not going to happen. Well, and it's not legal. You, your 25 foot no buffer no, zone is for, legal. It's for a, it's for the a wetland. The Attorney General checked out by law. This is not a wetland. This is a turtle protection uh, by area. By law says it is a, a protected area. It doesn't You're, say it's a wetland. It said it's a protected area. I don't know your bylaws that well. Well, you should have but checked it out. But it's possible for them to be wrong. It's possible oh, for no, them it's to not be wrong. Well, they can be wrong. I mean, there can be mistakes in them. Uh, I don't think so. The Attorney General checked it pretty well when, we, uh, when he examined our bylaw. We had to make some changes, and we made changes that he didn't think were legal. This is just but the rest crazy. is legal. Oh, this, oh, this, this is, is not the bylaw. Yeah. This, this is just this the, is the bylaw. This is the, this is the. It was issued under the wetland our wetland protection bylaw. Okay. This is all an right. order of conditions. Okay. All right. I I was looking for something different. You realize that seventy three percent of this property is in that conservation restriction area. If you take twenty five feet and add it to the entire perimeter of that. It's almost 100% of the land. you got a road in the middle of it. I mean, you're not thinking this through. It well, doesn't make any sense. When you designed it, you should have paid attention. I didn't design it. I bought it with all this stuff in place. Uh, Done. Uh, Read it, reviewed I mean, it, gave it to my attorneys, the whole nine <coughs> yards. This is an area that uh, I just, these are perpetual conditions. Okay, I, now I, I wanted to see the... Uh, I still wanted to, no. I still wanted to see the bylaw. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what you're looking for. Um, a condition that says it was a 25. We have all agreed to this when we had the order of conditions. Uh, well, I, well, I, I know, but I don't know where it is in there. I, you know, it, it's. Um, well, there's only 10 pages, and the last four or five don't even deal with that. But we're getting off uh, track. There's a difference between your jurisdiction and what is a wetland. A wetland is a wetland. That you can't call something well, a wetland. That's not a wetland. We went through this with your consultant. The NHESP land is within your jurisdiction. I get that. That's why we're here. And our bylaw has says that NHESP's conservation area is a protected area, and we have it's it's part of our, our wetland regulation. That an NHESP it's a protected area, area yeah. will be treated as a wetland. Yeah. Protected. That's the reason why we put it in here to begin with. And gets the same buffer that a wetland would get. Yeah. Yep. Well, here it is. Here it is. A 25 foot minimum undisturbed vegetation buffer zone adjacent to the delimited wetlands boundary shown on the approved plan will be required for wetlands and wildlife. Uh, 50 no buffer. And shall not apply to the limited wetland crossing. Oh, that's a wetland area. This is a subdivision you're looking at right here. This is individual houses. They have their own uh, waters and conditions. It, it, should, it should be on the map. Right here. It's in there somewhere. But we'll get back to the uh, conservation restriction area on lot 7. We're still waiting for a plan. Well, are we working? Have we finished these other three lots? or? What, what's the plan with respect I, to these three lots? If I may, Mr. Chairman, sure. I, I think in the future as permits come into my office, before I issue a permit, I'd like to go out with at least a member of the board or the board in its entirety so we can look at the sites and see where that 25-foot setback will be so I can make sure that there's no disturbance in that area. So, we can give you a copy of our bylaw. No, no, I'm not, say, I'm not questioning the bylaw. I'm just saying I want to go out okay. to the site to make sure that the delineation is appropriate. I think there's actually signs out there 
at the delineation, but I want to make you sure. You mean the center of the house that you approve? Uh, the location that's there? There's eight, any, any 18 that, signs around right. the subdivision any, that any, identify uh, I can't do anything about the houses signs. that were built. So, and if I'm somewhat responsible, I apologize, my apologies. But in the future, before I issue the actual permit for construction, I'd like to go over the number of your board just so I can understand where that 25 foot will be. Yeah. All right. What does it say? The wetlands would be, if it was wetlands, it would be flagged. 25 I think, feet from the flagged line. I, I think it's the signs that delineate this particular. Yeah. Uh, and these area. orders and conditions, we. we the conservation restriction area is plainly marked, and, and right. they require signage. We reiterated the signage, but we also have in our bylaw, be, I, because they filed under our bylaw. Right, I agree. We I have a 25-foot undisturbed vegetation zone. Right. We also have a 50-foot no construction zone, and uh, that's out the window too with uh, at least one of these lots. That's 28.2 feet, 62 from the other side. If this had been designed with our, with our conditions in mind, uh, it would have been a different story. Right, so I want to make sure that yeah. we're, my office and... and I mean, I noticed it's, it's, uh, it's after the fact now. I know that, but we've got four more houses, five more houses to build yeah. out there. I want to make sure we do it right from here on out. Well, you, can't answer, you can't issue a certificate of compliance if what you're saying is correct. You'd have to deny me a certificate of compliance. But the house is already the there. That's kind of foolish now, isn't it? It's, it's also not a question of foolish. What, go what's by accurate? Place. You're going to issue a certificate of compliance for something where we didn't comply? That doesn't sound appropriate. No. You'll get your certificates of compliance. We but just let drop the ball. We should have noticed this when it was filed, but we didn't. But if, if what you're saying is true, none of my remaining lots are building lots. None of the lots remaining are building lots. I, I don't know exactly where the line is. I do. I know it well. Oh, good. I mean, but, I, 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 the line is, is towards the back of the property. It doesn't go around the house, does yeah, it? They, In some instances, it does. Wraps right around it. Because we, we took 73% of our land and donated it to the conservation restriction area for NHGSP. You didn't donate anything. The previous owner donated it. All you did was sign on to the uh, re-sign. It was already a done deal. When you bought that property, all of those restrictions were in place, except they had never been consummated. You, the second time you filed, you got another, because uh, NHP went through this with the previous owner. That's how all those signs, all those things were set up. All of those restricted areas were in place before you bought the property. Agreed. I, I pointed that out okay. 10 minutes ago. All right. So 73% of my property is donated to a conservation restriction area through NHESP and this board. You guys approved the plan. It's recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and there's a deed restriction on all nine lots that spells out the areas that are to be restricted. Conservation restriction, yes. N nowhere in there does it say anything about a 25-foot buffer zone. Um. This was issued Your bylaw says it with respect to a wetland. Yeah. Wet, wetlands are, are, have no, a 25 foot... My bylaw says that we protect areas of, of animal... If it's, uh, does it say resource area or does it say wetland area? No, it doesn't say wetland It says we, wetland area. You went over before. We had this argument before. When you filed the RDA, you refused to file a notice of intent. And you and your co consultant... We didn't back refuse. We came in and asked for permission. We said uh, we think it's onerous to have to come in and you file a notice RDA. of intent. And we and you said we'll let you go. We'll let you go on an RDA with this one, this and you need to file a notice of intent on every other, which is what we. But you said it didn't have to. So when we filed under the, the notice of intent, Act, you didn't have to. But this is issued under the Dighton Wetland Protection Bylaw, mm -hmm. separate intensity from the uh, and more restrictive than the uh, mm -hmm. uh, Wetland Act. And you have a you have a copy of that bylaw where you can point to the fact I that it says idea, but yeah. that NHESP. I uh, gave your consultant at you a bylaw back then when we had this well, first I argument. Have, I'm asking if you have one here tonight where no, you can point to what you're quoting. But I cited exactly. I thought I had one here. Uh, it's in my desk at home. Uh, here we go. This is the determination we gave you back then. 
and the conditions that we issued with this. Conservation Commission at our November 19, 2014 meeting agreed to issue a negative determination with special conditions as allowed under the Dighton Wetlands Protection Bylaw to prevent the alteration of two conservation restricted areas on Lot 7 to protect the habitat of the turtle. The oral conditions issued by the Commission for the subdivision required that every developable lot would be subject to the plowing by notice of intent prior to construction. As pointed out to the Commission by the applicant, that's you, and his consultant, the Wetland Act does not consider NHESB map priority estimated habitat a resource area. However, the Dighton Wetland Protection Bylaw does protect rare plants and species habitat under Section 1 and Section 9. Since the subdivision order condition was issued jointly by the Act and Bylaw, the conditions requiring the notice of intent for each lot remaining stands. Okay. That's pretty plain. Sure. I've read that letter 20 times. And so these are a copy of your bylaws that you're referencing, right? There you go. There you go. So yeah. sec show me in section one and section nine. Google for it. Where it provides. Well, I'm not just doing it. Sir, I've read it several times today. Yeah. And, you show and me where it shows a 25 foot buffer zone. The 20, it, a bylaw. Well, that's it says that's a protected area. You just reference section one and you section do. nine of that section document. Section one, section nine. Forgive me for being difficult, but you're trying you to render the remaining five lots in my that's subdivision fine. unavailable, we'll so discussion. I take a little offense to it. This, the purpose is there. What is the right. yellow mark on there for? Rare species habitat, including rare plants and uh, species. Yep. That's what it says. Yeah. Those are the, the protect. This is purpose of the act is to protect these areas. Yeah. This whole paragraph is protected. That says rare species habitat, including rare plant species. And then the rest of the bylaw applies yep. to that those areas. That's where the 25 foot and 50 foot. But in this particular instance, we took that plan that I showed you and created an area that far exceeds that, dedicating 73% of the property as resource area. It's well, it far exceeds the 25 and 50 foot buffer zones that you're referencing. But the buffer zone is our local bylaw. You're talking about NHESP's right. requirements. Well, Nothing to do with us. At, at, at some point soon, we're going to have to, I'll get my attorney involved, you can get your town council involved, whatever. We're going to have to get this figured out. Because, I kid you not, I won't be able to build on any of those five lots if you try to impose a 25 foot buffer zone in addition to the conservation restriction area that we've all already agreed to. It's and that you agreed to on these three notice of notices of intent. You guys approved them. I don't know what's changed between then and now. Approved what? We approved these. You didn't follow them. You approved these three. The plans that you approved for the notices of intent show the restriction areas. We submitted a plan. You approved the plan. I told you we dropped the ball. Now, now you have a 25-foot buffer zone that you want to impose. Actually, we have a 50, the house is in the 50-foot buffer zone, mm -hmm. so we really dropped the ball. You know, you've gone from in the beginning, when I first met you with respect to this subdivision, talking about how silly it was and how ridiculous it was, because you knew that Peter Blue planted the turtles on the property, and we did a turtle sweep, and we couldn't find a turtle. It, on and on and on, how ridiculous this thing was. Fault. But now you've got an axe to grind, for I whatever no reason. No axe to grind. I'm Clearly you do. You Clearly you do. What are you talking about? You said we're having a discussion, but I don't have an axe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But you, you can be difficult to deal with. That restriction area, you damaged it. You haven't restored it. Well, that's a totally separate issue than what I, we're talking is. about. That's, that's what I wanted to talk about, but we were talking about certificates well, of compliance. because I need certificates of compliance for yeah. these three properties. Yeah, you can get a certificate of compliance. Even though we didn't comply. According to what the you're saying, that was there already, right? Rejected. Yep. Okay. Okay. Foot. I mean, we don't have to miss, we don't have to drop the ball on every lot, do we? Let's see. Okay. 